on the A-Rod front, going back to that for a moment, you guys, like you said, were friends, knew each other Wait, where, growing well, up. On, weren't you his uh, tight end? Or what? Yeah. Tight end? Broke state record, broke school records and almost went to all state football together. And yeah, I mean, basketball too. And you kind of, you know, like I said, it, it's just, it's painful. I can't. You know, it's like, wait a minute. Like, do you not forget you got suspended 200 games? And it's like, come on, man. Like, stop it. Like, you know what? I, I get it. I played a power position. I didn't have any. Uh, did it cross my mind? Yeah, of course we thought about it. But I was like, you know what? I, I want to be able to walk when I'm 50 and not, you know, and it, it, I'm, it was a different. I don't I don't really point fingers. But I mean, I just look at like USA baseball as much as I love them. You know, the WBC, Andy Pettit's their pitching coach. It's like, come on, man. Like, and everybody's like, oh, well, you know, he came out and, and came out and said, you know, he apologized. Well, no, you got caught, bud. And then you apologized. So don't come out and say you were honest from the start. And I get it. You know, I get why guys do it. I mean, if it was legal, I think we all would do it. It's like you want to get back on the field. You're paid to perform. You're, you're not getting – you still get paid, but you want to be – you want to earn the money that they gave you, right? You want to be back on the field, but it's like – this whole like, well, he came out and he said this bullshit. No, you got caught, bud. And then you came out and admitted it. So don't like no one's ever come up the first and be like, hey, I took this, uh, you know, suspend me. But it's like, you know, and, and, and there's no one to blame <laughs> with the game because they, they keep they keep rewarding these guys. And, you know, the list goes on and on. The guys that get contracts afterwards and all this other stuff. Now they're back in the game. And it's like, wait a minute. Wait. And they're, they're now they're talking about it. And it's like on TV. You're like, wait a minute. Stop. You know, it's like. You know, Millar's an old teammate, but it's ironic how he, he works for MLB Network and he was a replacement player. It's like, I mean, am I the only one that sits back and thinks this shit? It's like, it's just, it's just, it's it's mind blowing. It's mind numbing. When you see Alex, because I know you you live, you you still see, he still sees Alex, right? Does uh, he, occasionally. Does he acknowledge you? In a certain setting, like if it's a baseball setting, if we're doing stuff for Westminster, our high school, yeah. If he's not sleeping at the table, like my, like they honored my our coach for his <laughs> three millionth win, and there he is in his Timberwolf shirt, sleeping in a chair. And it's like, come on, man. Like, you know, I, I just, I always said that he's gonna die a lonely man because you know what, this whole like, you know, father of the year stuff. God bless him for his daughters because it's gonna come a long way. But uh, it's like you're just trying to get into heaven now. Like, I, I, and that's the part. Like, I'm still friends with my high school team. We still text often, not as often as we should, but we still text group thread, constantly bad badgering each other. And it's just, you know, he's just distanced from it. And that's, I don't care how good or how great you become and how far your career goes. You all, you never forget your high school dudes. Like, that's just like your high school and your college teammates are, are, are like, they're brothers till the end. And we still talk and we still, we still shoot the shit, but like, you know, he's just nowhere to be found. Even when we do high school stuff for our coach, it's like, he's just, you know, like I said, he's, I have a picture of him sleeping at the table <laughs> in his Timberwolves shirt. I'm like, are you serious? Like go Wolves. <laughs> what, what was he like? No wonder they like, suck. <laughs> <laughs> what was he like in, in high school then? Like, did he change a lot as a person? Cause you guys were tight in high school now. Yeah, I mean, I will say he was institutionalized. He's been told what to say and how to say it since he was, you know, 10 years old. You know, it's like you ever watch him do an interview. It's like, oh, hey, Pat. And like, you don't know Pat. Pat don't know you. Like, you know, you know, it's like, but then who am I to argue? This guy's hanging out with Warren Buffett. So um, he's on Shark Tank, for God's sakes. Uh, but like, he just, you know, he had like a funny thing is he had no sense of style. He would he'd get, we'd all be coming to my parents' house it was our kind of our gathering place and We'd all go there before we go out. One, because my dad would buy 50 cases of beer and it was easy to take one and he wouldn't notice it was gone. And then it was, it was a gathering place for everybody. Alex would show up with this like purple and black polka dotted shirt. And I'm like, dude, get, take that off. Like, I'm not going to get caught you anywhere near around you wearing that shirt. So take that off. Go get a shirt and joke around. Like, he still owes me a, a shitload of money for the wardrobe that he stole from me. But not that I'm some fashion you know, guru, but that shit was tired. And, but that's just who we were. It was, it was goofy. And I think the number one thing, in all seriousness, in 2007, I'll never forget this. Like, it was like day three of spring training. And, like, I'm in, I'm with the Yankees, no seven. And all of a sudden, I'm stretching on my own. Kind of, I knew Johnny, and I knew the guys were playing against him. But all of a sudden, I noticed, like, Derek started coming closer and Posada started coming closer. And I just was kind of like my own business. And they were like, 
Posada came up to me. He's like, we should have brought you here years ago. And I'm like, for what? Like, he's like, Alex is completely different around you. And I'm like, well, cause I, you guys, it's on you guys. You guys let him get away with this shit. Like you call him out on his dumbass stuff. He would do, he'd make a kid carry his glove and his belt and didn't know where this is. I'm like, what the fuck? Like you can't carry your own belt. Like what's wrong with you? Put it on. Like no one cares. Like, Everybody else here is making $30 million too. And they're just as good as everybody else is. So what's the problem? But I remember like Posada made a huge point, like, man, we should have brought you here years ago. And I was like, well, shame on you for letting them get this way. You guys could have stopped this shit. He's in awe of all of you. That's why he wanted to come here. And, uh, you know, and that was, uh, that was the year, the whole fiasco with the blonde stripper. And I'll, <laughs> I'll never forget this. So we're, we make the playoffs and we struggled all year. We grounded, made it to the playoffs, and God bless Jason Jambi. He was like my my twin brother that I didn't know I had. And <laughs> we're taking ground balls and practicing before the playoffs start. And Alex had a phenomenal year. He had like 56 homers, 160 yard RBIs, whatever the hell it was. And his defense was awesome. And we're taking ground balls during like during BP, and he all of a sudden he starts throwing balls into the stands. And I what's going on? Because it was October now. Well, everybody knew he had struggles in October. And, uh, Giambi stands up in the middle of practice and goes, hey, do you want me to put a blonde wig on and you can bend me over and bang me in the ass? Whatever gets you right, let's go. Like, get your ass back and get, throw it in your chest. Like, it was, like, it was priceless because, like, no one ever said that shit to him. And it was, like, it was wonderful. It was amazing. I was, like, that's – I, like, spit up. I was, like, did you just really scream that across the field in the middle of a practice?